Baker Bontrager. So welcome to today's writing lesson. So on Monday, Mrs. Bontrager, she introduced you what an autobiography is. And remember that an autobiography, it's a text that's written by you, the author, and to inform your readers about your real life. So you're talking about real events that happened to you, not anything made up. And you're going to be speaking or writing in the first person. So make sure you use those pronouns such as I, me, and my. We talked about why do authors write autobiographies? Why is it important for you guys to write one? Well, the people that write autobiographies, they want to share important events that shaped who they are. So our goal for this writing assignment is to end up writing a four-paragraph autobiography. On Monday, you wrote your very first paragraph titled, This Is Me, where you talked about your birth, special memories, and your family. For today's assignment, you're going to be writing your second and your third paragraph. And those are going to be titled The Best of Times and The Worst of Times. So authors of autobiographies write about good times and the bad times that help shape their lives. Mrs. Bontrager shared some mentor texts with you. And these authors of these autobiographies, they shared really good times and they shared the really bad times. And the reason that we do that is because, again, it just lets our readers know what events really shaped us and made us who we are. So think about what about events shaped your life. So for your second paragraph, you're going to label it. You're going to give it the heading called The Best of Times. And these are some questions that you can answer to help you stay on top topic. So maybe you can explain when and where this day or time period happened. How old were you? Who might have you been with during this time? And how did this best time or best day or time period make you feel? That's really important. If you get nothing out of this, we want to know how this made you feel this event. And another really important thing is think about this last question. What did you learn from this event? And how did this event change you as a person? And then your third paragraph, it's going to be kind of like just your second one, except this is going to be you're going to label it the worst of times. And you can answer these same questions, but really think about those last two questions. How did this event make you feel? And how did this event change you as a person? What did you learn? Okay, if you answer these questions, it's going to help you stay on topic. So every paragraph, and you're writing two of them, so both of those paragraphs they should include at least five sentences. I think Mrs. Bondrager says four, I say five, so between four and five. But each paragraph, make sure you include a topic sentence. And a topic sentence is just the pair of the sentence that lets your reader know what you're, they're gonna be what you're gonna be talking about. And then it has three supporting details and a closing sentence. So you want to wrap it up, you don't want to end it abruptly. So make sure you use that closing sentence. So I'm going to show you an example of my autobiography, more specifically my paragraphs two and three. On your assignment, you're going to also see an example of Mrs. Bontrager's. So make sure that you read hers so you can get a really good idea of what we expect. So here's my Google Doc. Here I have, if you see at the top, I have my title. It's centered along with the author. My name is also centered. And then I have the heading for my first paragraph that we already wrote on Monday titled, This Is Me. So if I move down, I will show you my second and third paragraphs. If you notice the heading for each paragraph, I have the best of times and the worst of times. Now, obviously, as an adult, I have time here. I've had events since then that have shaped me of who I am. But I wanted to share with you some memories from childhood that really stood out for me. So here we go. The best of times. Some of the best times of my childhood were during summer breaks. One particular summer, I played on an all-boys peewee baseball team. My mom didn't want to chauffeur around three kids to three different baseball practices, so they allowed me to play with the boys. I loved being the only good girl on the team. I was a really fast runner and always beat the boys in running drills, which the coaches thought was hilarious. Our team was undefeated that season, and we were declared the Pee Wee champions. We celebrated with a pool party, and everyone received tall first place trophies. The best part was seeing all the trophies with boy baseball players on top. 
but there among them was a trophy made especially for me. It was a girl baseball player sporting a ponytail. I felt so, so special that day, and it was the first time I realized that standing out and being different could feel so good. So I'm just going to really want your attention to go into that last sentence. I talked about how it made me feel inside and what I learned. I did the same thing, except this time I shared a memory that wasn't so good. One of the most difficult times growing up was during my middle school years. I remember getting in an argument with a girl on the bus, and she was so mad that she told her big sister, who was in seventh grade and a year older than me. The next day, this girl's sister sat with me on the bus and told me she was going to beat me up. I was so scared, but the worst part was that she never forgot and convinced all her friends to bully me too. This went on all through middle school, and it caused me dread coming to school every day. I remember feeling all alone and scared. Even though it was difficult, this experience taught me how important it is to be kind to everyone. And if I ever get in an argument with someone again, make sure she doesn't have a mean older sister. So again, I'm going to want your attention to go to that last sentence. I really let you know how it made me feel and what I learned from it. So make sure that you include that in your writing today. And remember that you also read Mrs. Bontrager's account. So you're going to have to go back probably to Monday's lesson and you're going to have to click on that Google Doc that you wrote your first paragraph in. Or you can just go to your Google Drive and you should be able to see it there. So if you have any questions, please email me or Mrs. Bontrager and we will help you in any way we can.